Imagine, you've just finished building your first chopper. You've got to get it in the back of the truck and head out across the mountains to get to your first show. At that show, you bring home the second place Builder's Choice Award. Not bad for a first weekend. Hello and welcome. I'm Bruce. This is Speed and Color. Today, we're, uh, we're sitting down with a builder from Rosland, BC. I won't go into a lot of detail about him because you're going to get to meet him in a minute. But I do just want to touch on, on the show that we were at. So Kickstart is a great show that happens in Calgary, Alberta. It's put on by Ill-Fated Customs, our friends who you may have seen on the show here before. Uh, Kickstart show is just amazing. It's a format that is very different. Uh, the way you get into the Kickstart show is you have to send in your application. Uh, I believe the Kickstart committee, if you want to call them that, reviews the applications and accepts certain bikes for the show. I believe this year's show was originally going to be 43 uh, motorcycles and there were some adjustments last minute and they wound up with 44 bikes on display. Very limited, uh, a lot of space to look at the bikes. The show is held in a, a heritage building here in Calgary called the Pioneer. Beautiful setting, you know, the walls, the, the wood floors, everything is just uh, really, really nice about this setting. And uh, you know, one, uh, what do they accept for motorcycles in the show? It's not all choppers, it's not all bobbers. Uh, there's beautiful restorations. Uh, there was a barn find there this year that I, I don't think they had even moved the dust off of. They had been very careful to get it there as it was found in the barn. There's cafe racers. There's certainly choppers and bobbers and Harleys and, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but really a, a diverse uh, a diverse group for sure uh, and I think it's great that uh, you know the committee has this in mind as they select the bikes that are going to be in the show so kind of exclusive kind of uh, you know uh, a tribute just to uh, just to get into it an honor just to get into the show um, every year, held every year, it's an annual show, uh, used to be held in May, now it's in June, uh, which I think is better timing, uh, we were actually able to ride in and out this year, which is good. Uh, so that's the format of the show. The other thing that's unique about the show, or I think it is, uh, is the, the judging and the classes. So in effect, there's two... I hate to even call them classes. I don't know what you'd call them. So there's people's choice and there's builder's choice. And anybody who has their motorcycle in there on display is considered a builder. Uh, and they get a builder's choice ballot. People's choice is general public who attends the show, uh, spouses, friends of the builders. Uh, for example, Karen uh, with me got a people's choice ballot where I got a builder's choice ballot. So that's the, the separation is builder's choice and people's choice. Really neat. Uh, top three uh, as selected by people and, and builders. Uh, the top three get awards. Um, really, really cool. And I saw something this year that I thought was really interesting and I'll throw it out to you. I'd love to get comments if you've seen this kind of thing before or what your thoughts are on this. But the people's choice went pretty much exactly the way I would have expected. It went to three bikes that were very polished, uh, very clean. Uh, you know, glossy paint, uh, you know, the, the top people's choice, I believe was a, a 1928 or 29 AJS, just beautifully restored. Uh, the other two bikes had custom paint, 
lots of chrome, lots of polish, like I say, glossy paint jobs and everything. Uh, very well detailed, beautiful machines, no doubt. Uh, but interesting that all three in the people's choice category were that kind of, of quality or that kind of, of build. Uh, on the builder's choice side, I saw something that kind of surprised me and I don't know if it's happened in years past and I just didn't notice, but on the builder's choice side, the top two bikes, and I believe the third one, I can't remember who got third place, but the, the top two bikes were bikes that, I guess the best description I would use, uh, because I certainly don't want to be offensive here, but uh, the best description I could use is, is raw. Um, they didn't have glossy paint jobs. The graphics weren't buried in layers of clear. Um, the you know the finishes were were kind of matte. Um, the bikes weren't super clean. Uh, you know there were some dirty parts there, and and certainly not everything had been polished and and chromed or, or you know blasted or finished in some kind of uh, you know renewed way. Um, you know, there were parts of them that were, as I say, raw, uh, experienced, uh, you know, they had some, some wear. And it was, it was interesting to me that builders recognized something that the general public or that the people's choice voters didn't recognize. And I, I don't know if that was an element of creativity, uh, an appreciation for that that raw garage build. Um, I, I, I don't exactly know, I, I, and I'll be honest, as a builder, I voted for uh, for a couple of those bikes. So I, I thought it was great that they, uh, they won, but it, it was interesting that they certainly were not the shiniest, uh, perhaps most detailed bikes there but they were innovative uh, they were cool uh, and they were they were grassroots I guess is what I would say and to that that's given me a little bit of food for thought here a little bit different approach and uh, I, I'm gonna look for more of that kind of stuff to to bring to you on the podcast here on the tube cast on the video version uh we'll get into the whole podcast naming convention on, on another show but i i'm gonna look for that kind of stuff because i think it's really important for us to see that professional builders are great don't get me wrong they do some beautiful stuff and i could list a bunch of them but we don't need to get into that but I think we all appreciate that, that amateur, uh, that newness, that I don't do this for a living, I do it because I love it. Um, that kind of skill and, and creativity. So I just wanted to, to tell you that. And like I say, I'm certainly open to hearing from you. I'd love to know what your perspective is on that. Uh, I just thought it was pretty cool that builders recognized something different. And I also, hats off to, uh, to Ill Fated Customs and the Kickstart Show. Absolutely brilliant having People's Choice and Builder's Choice. Uh, I would have been disappointed if the same three bikes or if two of the three uh, got awards on both sides, but they didn't. And the, the bikes. The bikes that got awards were completely different. They were totally different. So in that way, as I say, uh, brilliant having those two categories and I love the way it worked out and I, I really hope that going forward it works out that way every time. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's what that's about. Today on this episode, you're gonna get to meet one of the builders uh, cool story. I don't want to tell you too much about it. I've already told you some stuff that you're going to hear again in the in the show, but that's okay. 
Um, really appreciate you being here. I appreciate everybody who tunes in, watches. Uh, I hope there's some value in, in what I'm doing here. Um, again, a reminder, if you haven't yet, if you don't mind subscribing, boy, I'd sure appreciate it. It, uh, it really helps with what I'm doing. Uh, ideas for content, if anybody out there knows somebody whose bike should absolutely be featured, I would love to put, uh, put together a plan to make that happen. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm here, I appreciate you, and I'd love to hear from you. Let's get on to the show, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Well, here we are at uh, the Kickstart Show in Calgary, Alberta, down on the Stephen Avenue Mall. It's uh, Sunday morning, and I met these guys uh, when I got here. Uh, Kickstart Show is a fantastic show, by the way. Uh, Jen and Kenny at Ill Fated Customs do a super job of putting it on. It's very unique. It's all uh, branch built machines, no professional builds allowed. There's survivor bikes, there's choppers, there's bobbers, there's cafe racers, there's everything here. Uh, it's kind of interesting in that uh, you have to apply to be in the show. And uh, Ill-Fated Customs selects the bike, the bikes that will be in the show. I believe this year there's 43 or 44. Um, yeah, so it, it's not a huge show in terms of bike count but it's really a privilege to get accepted into the show. So these guys um, that I'm going to introduce you to in a second, they came from British Columbia, which uh, is a bit of a trek for this show. Typically this show has been more local. I know that Jen is trying to, uh, trying to give it more of a, not an international flavor, but certainly more of a Western Canada flavor, get some, some builders in from a little further away. Uh, so that was part of the goal for this year, and uh, these guys fit the bill. Uh, so, I am going to introduce them, and I'm going to let them talk about themselves a little bit. You can get to know them and, and what they're about. And, uh, you know, I will say, and I, I certainly don't want to offend anybody, these guys are the guys I love in this community. They're, they're down to earth. They're, they're not high-end guys, they, you know, they don't have all, uh, uh, do you have a downdraft booth? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't have all, like all the poly. And they, they don't have all the cool shit and everything, but they do nice work. I, I love the stuff that gets built in home garages, and we're going to show you uh, Zach's bike here in a, in a few minutes, but let's, uh, let's get started. I will, I'm going to introduce Zach first, and Zach, I apologize, I do not know your last name. Uh, Lumsden, Zach Lumsden. Lumsden. Yeah. So, Jack Lumsden from Rosland. Now, do you guys say Rosland, or do you say Rosland? Oh, I think yeah. that, I mean, to answer you talk to. Oh, okay. Dog, it's an argument every day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I guess Jack I say Rosland. Rosland. Yeah, I say Rosland. Okay. Yeah. It's like a little mountain town. Out in the Kootenays there. So you go ahead and introduce yourself. The one thing I, I need you to tell us is where you're from. Uh, I'm from New Zealand. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm from New Zealand. I came out here. Oh, I, yeah, I traveled a bit of Canada. I came out here to snowboard initially, and then kind of got roped into staying for the summer. Um, I mean, it wasn't hard to convince me, but. Yeah. Um, like I visited Roslyn six, seven times before I started to stay. Uh, I stayed for a summer. I think I was like I was doing bike stuff in New Zealand, and then decided to stay in Canada. And I think I was here for like a couple of weeks, and then went and bought like an old CX, and that was kind of the first thing we did in the shop. So are you on a permanent visa now, or I'm a citizen now. You're yeah. a citizen now. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Welcome. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, for a living, you do what? I'm a millwright. Okay. Yeah. And I know you share 
shop space. Yeah, it was kind of Josh's time. shop. Josh got it for his all your kind of painting and art and stuff. And yeah. yeah. So then it turned into a like shop pretty quickly. Do you work for somebody as well? I do. I yeah. I have a. I work full time for. A, uh, I do like trailer uh, uh, painters. Okay. I'm like ski lifts. Yeah. So it's oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, so when I'm not there, I'm at the shop pretty much. Cool. Very good. So I always ask guys like you this question because I'm always so envious. Do you weld pretty well? I mean, I'm getting better. Are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm far from the best. And this, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, with work, I do a, a lot of welding, but then we started getting into building these bikes and just, we'd, I'd never done, well, neither of us had done any TIG welding. So we bought, a, we bought a TIG machine and kind of really figured it out on this build, I think. Yeah, this was the project. Yeah. So when are you going to start doing aluminum? Uh, I do a bit of aluminum. Do you? Yeah. 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 Tigging aluminum uh, has been that one thing in life that I've always <laughs> wanted to master. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys something. Don't friggin' wait. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> because here I am. I got welders in the shop. I have a beautiful shop at home. Darren and I have worked hard. We have all the stuff we, we need. Uh, and I'm not boasting. It's just hard work, life has been good, and now I have something called Essential Tremor, mm -hmm. and I shake. And if, if you can get it coordinated, the shaking is actually okay, because <laughs> yeah, you get your far, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. but it's really hard to get that coordinated. <laughs> so here I am in my mid-60s, and I can finally do the thing that I would love to do, and I, I can't do it right now. Uh, but I am going to the university to the neurology center and stuff, and they're going to see what they could do. There are some treatments that uh, that take care of it, but you know, hey, life is good. I am not complaining, but you do get the odd kick in the pants too, right? So you guys do all this shit while you're capable and everything's good. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely trying to do a lot of it now. Good, yeah. excellent. Anything else you want to tell us? About me? No, I don't think there's anything else to know. That's pretty much it. Hang out in Rosalind. Do you want to say hi to your girlfriend or anything like no, that? No, just me. Just you? Yeah. Okay, good deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, this other gentleman with us is Josh. How do you say Vlaming or Vlaming? Vlaming. Vlaming, yeah. Uh, so, Josh Vlaming has a company called Kickstart Customs, Customs with a C. Uh, he's a, a painter, and he's a bunch of things. He's going to tell you all about it. Uh, very talented young man. I had heard about him, and when I saw his work here, and actually it was really funny, because when Karen and I walked in, there's a bunch of art hanging on the wall, and as long as I remember, I'll take a picture of it and put it in the video here. Karen looked over and saw a sign, a hand-painted sign that says, Built for Speed. She looked at it and she said, we need that at home. And she just loves the style, the colors, everything else. Uh, so we're working with Josh on something there. Uh, but his his art, his style of lettering, all that kind of stuff, it really hits home for me. It's my my style of, uh, of stuff. So I'm gonna let Josh introduce himself, but before I do that, I did a little research last night on his website and I read something that I thought was pretty funny. It said, people say I wear a lot of hats, literally and figuratively, or, or whatever it says. And I thought, well, you know, if a guy wears a lot of hats, he better have a speed and color flex fit hat. Because these are super cool and super limited. Oh, no way. Buddy. Thank you. <laughs> right on. Super. Luck. Yeah, I think it looks fantastic, but I'm biased, right? <laughs> Go ahead, tell everybody about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Josh Vlaming. Uh, I'm an artist and designer uh, based in Roslyn, BC. Um, I've been sign painting and playing with paint on bikes for about seven years now. Um, 
my mom's a professional artist. I grew up with a ton of art in the house. Um, no television and lots of opportunities for creative endeavors. Um, I was a timber framer for 15 years, uh, kind of leading up until COVID. Uh, things shut down and it was actually six months prior, I decided to step away from timber framing and start a tattoo apprenticeship. Uh, something I've been looking at getting involved with for a while. Um, timing was interesting because uh, tattooing didn't bode super well as a real fresh apprentice right. um, at that time. But I had a great opportunity to learn a lot about traditional tattooing, the art forms, and all the, like, just that style and, and the history behind it. Um, and at that point, I rolled what I'd learned in the apprenticeship into my paint practice, and this is what we have now. Um, so it's very heavily, like, inspired by tattoo culture and imagery. Um, I've been fascinated by sign paintings since I was a teenager. Uh, I told my guidance counselor in high school I was going to be a sign painter. She decided I should probably seek help because that was like not even a remote option at that point. Uh, but here we are. Yeah, 20 years later and full-time sign painter and artist. So who influences your, your style? You know, you go back through, and I don't know that you did much in the way of signs, but there was Ed Roth, certainly Von Dutch. Yeah. Um, there, there's a whole bunch of guys. I mean, yeah, those guys definitely influence the style and, like, to a degree. Visually, like, my imagery is definitely more tattoo-inspired. Um, guys like Darren McCagg, um, phenomenal artist out of the States, um, and there's been a resurgence in sign painting, so there's a bunch of guys my age and kind of generations just a little bit older than me that have really picked it up and run with it, so there's, yeah, it's been really cool to, like, research and learn from the old masters, a few of them that are still out there doing it, um, at, but then also this younger generation that's really picked up the torch and carried it on. Um, so what about pinstripe? Because pinstriping is a funny one. Um, when I started painting, I didn't want to touch it with a ten foot pole. Uh, the pinstriping I'd seen at that point, like local car shows. It was, there's a lot of really, uh, just wasn't my style. Um, it didn't appeal to me. To me, it felt like tribal tattoos from the 90s. It just like, <laughs> obviously some people are really into it, but it wasn't my thing. Um, I had an opportunity to go down to Colorado and do an event called Brushmasters Getaway five or six years ago. Um, and they had some of the best. It was everything from learning like automotive in the spray booth, laying flex and clear and all that stuff. Um, and that side of custom paint, we did hand lettering, we did airbrush and pinstriping. Um, and I was fortunate enough to work with like some of the best artists in North America. And that moment was when I realized how cool pinstriping can be, um, and really how limitless like it is. Like you can take it in so many different directions. Oh, yeah. You can do so much with it. Um, and I'm still very much learning, but enjoying the pinstriping more these days. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was going to ask you about something. Oh, your your commercial work, your signs and yeah. stuff. Now. Looking on your website, a lot of it looked like it might have been wood, and I always have a, sort of an interest in that, because in places like Banff, you are not allowed to have metal signs. 
Like everything there has to be wood. It all has to be traditional. Roslyn's very similar in that sense. Uh, being a like 150 year old mining town, it's uh, they're pretty strict on keeping things looking very traditional and cool. Yeah. Which and that's where has helped me out a lot. Yeah, that's where the um, work is. Or actually, I have a few in Roslyn, but. Nelson, BC, Creston, uh, kind of the whole West Kootenays has been really good. Um, and all I've gotten a lot of support with the traditional look, I imagine. For the most part, yeah. For the most part, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I've got signs in Kelowna and Vancouver as well. Okay. Um, the connection through the tattoo industry, I've done a couple conventions, um, has been really cool. Um, more and more, I'm just like seeing the value in that six months of my very brief, not even a tattoo apprenticeship, but um, yeah, what I learned and the connections that I made, and that's still carrying through really strong. Cool. Yeah. Good stuff. So, your buddy, yeah, how, how long have you owned that? Oh, the, this one we built for the show, le less than a year. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah, it was like. Uh, yeah, okay. it was July. It was July. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you guys said you were yeah. hard over the winter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were we were flat out till five days ago. Yeah. Like the day the, I mean, I was I put it together as we were putting it on the truck. So we were still. Yeah. yeah. So it was like yeah, I, yeah. Wrenches were out twelve hours before we loaded it on the truck. Okay. okay. I had a pretty good idea what I wanted to build though, and I just kind of waited till I found that bike and then. Cool. Yeah. You talked yeah. about skateboards, and your site talks about skateboards and snowboards, yeah. and you mentioned snowboards. Mm. So, is this kind of a common denominator, the skateboard snowboard thing for you guys? No, we never, yeah, 100%. Yeah, okay. We didn't make with motorcycles. We didn't okay. have uh, uh, snowboard. Both of us moved to Roslyn to snowboard, yeah. uh, work at Red Resort. And, um, yeah, Zach was running a train park. And I was bumming around snowboarding. And, uh, now, your uh, skateboards, are any of the ones here yours? Yeah. Uh, in the auction downstairs? Yeah, so I did one for the auction. Uh, it's a flying eyeball. Uh, pretty classic. Yeah. Like the hot rod tattoo y kind of thing. And what is the auction for? Uh, proceeds are going to Cousins Skateboards, which is uh, it's a non-profit uh, to get Indigenous youth on skateboards and support that whole community. Okay. Um, yeah. So you said you did one for the so auction, but you've got another one? One for the auction, and then I've got two hanging on the wall okay. in the other room there. Yeah. And all of your stuff over there is for sale. It is, yeah. yeah. Um, I had this brainwave last year because a lot of my signs, I do like, it's all wood, um, plywood cutouts, a lot of like silhouetted shapes cut out of the wood, being a timber framer by trade, like that paired up really nicely. I basically had a full wood shop worth of tools ready to... Um, when I started doing signs, um, and then I decided to try and do a silhouette cut out of a skateboard last summer. Um, so all the skateboards I have in the show here, uh, this weekend, they're all silhouette cuts, okay. um, cool. whether that's following the lettering or the imagery. Nice. Good for you. Well... Do we, what else do we need to talk about? Is there anything else you want to say? Oh, I don't have a lot to say. Should we, uh, <laughs> should we go over and take a look at that motorcycle? Yeah, we can look at the bike. That would be very cool. Right? That's what yeah. people really want to see. They really but don't want to see the three of us having a conversation no, 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 no. hour, right? <laughs> yeah. Real good, you guys. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And uh, we're going to make our way over to the motorcycle. We'll see you in a flash. Well, here we go, guys. Let's take a look at this brilliant piece. Uh, man, I like this bike. Good job. Good job. Thank so you. this was a, a combined effort, I understand. 
This is a combined effort. Yeah. This was something that I put together and Josh here painted. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, the place to start is what's the story behind the bike? Where did it come from? Why this bike? What, uh, what this, happened? I kind of knew I wanted to do an XS, so I was hunting for one. And I found this one. And this has been sitting behind a guy's shed, leaning against the wall for a long time. Someone, oh, is that right? Now, was yeah. it hardtailed and everything when you found it? It was or? somebody else that already had done the frame. I think this bike had been built at one point, uh, way before I got it. So the frame was done. Um, we pulled it out of there, uh, redid all the wire, and kind of spent the tail end of the summer getting it running, getting all the pieces put together. Right. It was in rough shape when you picked it out. Oh, like, yeah. It was a, yeah. It hadn't run in years. It was, yeah. Acorns coming out of the exhaust. That's oh, right. On that the right? first yeah. fire up, it was, uh, squirrels had filled and the motor with that's the tank that was with it? Pretty no, much. this, oh, that's no. a tank that I had off a CB from, oh, okay. that I, yeah, I haven't run that on that. Um, but it was, I got rid of the, uh, the CB and got this and pulled the tank off. It had like a, kind of a sports to looking tank mm -hmm. on it when I got it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It had a wild seventies paint job. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. Some blacked out frame. Born to be mild up here. Uh <laughs> yeah. Born to be mild. <laughs> I think I think the story was the the guy got it and didn't really know a lot about it and then crashed it. And then uh, and then lost interest. In the, yeah. Sat for a it. long time. Yeah. Mm. So we Good got this for peanuts. Good deal. Well, you know what? What I like to do on these, and uh, it seems to work well, is let's just start right from the front wheel and work our way back and tell everybody about the modifications and what you did and everything. Um, in this case, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to turn the bike around. So you will have to talk <clears throat> about this side a little bit, and we won't yeah. really get much of a picture <laughs> of it, but that's okay. Uh, I think everybody gets the idea. And if you can just keep in mind that there are people listening to the audio only. So when you describe something, if you can kind of keep them in mind to describe it a little more fully, maybe. Sure. Yeah. So uh, this is the front end and the front wheel that came with it? Yeah, so this is the front end of an XL 125 okay. uh, that matched up um, with the 21 inch front wheel and the drum brake off the XL as well. Nice. Um, yeah, so that kind of fit together, made it, gave it a narrower look. Right. Um, the headlight was, I had another headlight on it until last week. Um, and I mean, we'll get back to it, but I kind of built the sissy bar with the, this I just welded up out of stainless. Um, and we put the yellow glass window in the back and then right. we had this other, this was a swap meet find. This was a swap meet find that was on one of Josh's bikes until we had the window in the back and we were like, well, we can't really ah, do that without okay. the yellow nice. lens. It ties together well. Yeah. That's yeah. And yeah, then that's this, cool. these bars were something that I just made. Oh, you, um, you fab those yourself? Yeah, I, I built the bars. Now, um, did you bend them or just use pieces and weld them up? We, we work out of a pretty small shop there, so we, we didn't have a pipe bender or anything, but we're pretty lucky we have a guy uh, Mofab Matt down the road who has a welding shop. So uh, I asked him really nicely to bend up the bars. So we bent them and then I kind of figured out the geometry, out the and, geometry like, and the kind of crazy angle that upsets everyone. Um, so I did those up. How much have you ridden this? Have you got mm, some miles on it? Yeah, last, when I had it running last summer, it was kind of before we pulled it, stripped it down and painted it. Um, I got a decent amount of yeah, actually, this yeah. thing went into some ruthless campsites, and we did a few twelve kilometers down a dirt road uh, yeah. to Rag Beach. I was not right. nice to this thing <laughs> when I got it running. Cool. And, and then, you like the narrow bars and everything? It works. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I kind of that was the that was the plan to do. I really wanted to do a skinny kind of lane splitter. Um, so that was yeah. yeah, that was like almost one of the first things that I did for this. I really wanted super tight bars couldn't find anything that I really liked um, and then kind of had the idea we wanted to do the diamonds and triangles like throughout the whole thing yeah so I had yeah. a pretty oh, good great. idea how I wanted so you those run a, a hand clutch uh, yeah hand clutch shift. 
Uh, yeah, and then the and front brake on there too. Brake, which, yeah, and if uh, it was. Yeah, yeah, I did run a front brake on this only because we had this uh, little drum brake okay. that I didn't mind looking at. Um, well, otherwise, the idea was to. With a front end this short, yes, yeah, a front brake is is just fine, right? Uh, yeah, so it's three inches shorter. It's those long than, ones that get scary with yeah. a front brake out there, right? <laughs> yeah, it is a short front. It's three inches shorter than stock, this front end. Oh, really? Yeah, so okay. it's got kind of like a little... Yeah, because yeah, I kind of see it when it's... The frame, the bottom of the frame sits very parallel to the ground. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not Frisco style with the thing way up in the air. Yeah. No, we kind of tried to make the tightest, smallest little excess we could. Right. Yeah. Real good. Right down. So the tank you told us a little bit about. Um, yeah, that was a that was just a prefab so you know, tank that I got. Yeah. yeah, and I had it on another bike and it, it's looked a couple different ways this tank, but it kind of I mean it fit really well on this. Cool. Yeah. Uh, frame. That you didn't obviously you didn't rake this or anything. This is no, not we, stock. The frame and a guy I I'm sorry, I don't know who hardtailed this. It was yeah, yeah, like I said, pretty rough when we got it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, once we had it all stripped, so um, got a bunch of kilometers on this like last summer, kind of didn't really look like this, but went through the motor, got that running. Um, then when we stripped it down, um, we spent a lot of time on the frame. It was pretty, I mean, it was good from afar, but it, it wasn't, so we... I, I had the same issue with mine. And what I didn't know when I bought it, or when Karen bought it for me, but once I got it apart, and of course I was reading about hardtailing and how you you take the engine out and, and you set it up and then you have to bolt the engine in to tack it in place, then yeah. you have to take the engine out so you can finish weld it and everything. Well, whoever did it didn't take that final step of taking the engine out to finish weld it. Oh, yeah. So when I got it apart, it, it was really only welded tacked. around the top, but, but not nothing underneath. <laughs> And down on the bottom, same thing. It was welded underneath, but nothing up top. Only where they the can get to with the motor in it. <laughs> now, the, you know, the thing about a sporty, and these are, are pretty similar, is there's so many mounting points. The engine's really a, a structural piece. Yeah, right? it holds it together. So <clears throat> it's not going to fall apart going down the highway. But it was just funny, because when piece I got the mind. engine out and looked at the frame, I went, oh, <laughs> that didn't get finished, right? So... No, the, guy, the, the guy did a good job of welding this frame up. It, it just wasn't pretty to look at. So I don't think there was any real structural welding I had to do to it. There was a lot of tabs on this thing for I'm just not really sure. unnecessary yeah, it was stuff from like multiple different builds. It looked yeah, like. it, it just was, takes time yeah. to cut off, doesn't it? And oh, figure yeah. out what you need and what you don't. Oh, and, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. No, so it was, but it, it's great. It's simple now, real good. So yeah. moving, moving back. Uh, I guess the engine is the next thing to talk about. Yeah, I mean, did you do anything to it, or I, this is this is a stock engine. It's six fifty. It's yeah, it's got did no. Did you have to it. take it apart, or did, was it good the way? It was? Oh, this thing was yeah, it was full of uh, like acorns. acorns and all like, the, oh, like coming out of the exhaust. Oh, they, the exhaust was on it when it was lying there, but it was full like to the brim. They'd gotten in everywhere. <laughs> you were like three weeks. Nights after work, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, to get this thing to running. get it running, like yeah. There was no electrical in it. That was okay. so yeah. I had to kind of. I hadn't done an excess before. I mean, they're pretty simple to wire, so it wasn't a big yes. deal. But there was. I was trying to have to kind of figure that out. Uh, he had. I don't know. Yeah. So I basically just rebuilt the whole harness for this thing, and then and then the engine was pretty much good to go. Okay. Just kind of cleaned, what, cleaned what it up. What year is this? The motor's out of a seventy-seven. Okay. Yeah. So does it have the kicker and electric, or is it, it has kicker and electric? Okay. The I, the the electric isn't there anymore. It's just so the, this is the just, starters there, just but that's up. Well, the I kind of had to keep the when I did pull the back off the starter, the internals are fried. Like there's no yeah. So the the starter's still there to keep the oil in, but there's nothing inside it. And then yeah, it's just fixed up now. Cool. Got yeah. These, Love what you did with the kickstart, just for, well, even for people watching, and I'll try and get a picture <laughs> of this. Um, there's, do you call them dyes or dice when they're <laughs> together like that? Any of them? Yeah, yeah dice. Dice like know. you would roll in a game, 
and they're strung, there's five of them strung together to make the pedal front and back, to make the pedal for the kicker. Uh, it's quite innovative, it's really cool. Yeah, that was a just a Holly style, uh, like, well, bicycle style kicker pedal off a of Holly. And then Josh had the idea for dice, so there's, I mean. Oh, that was your idea, was yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I'd seen something similar, and the paint was coming together uh, at that point, and we were just like, it's kind of that, the whole style is like the baby blue, robin's egg blue, but kind of like tough yeah. as nails, so the dice kind of just fit with that whole theme. Cool. And, yeah. Now looking at the, uh, at the mids and the brake lever and stuff, did you fab all of that yourself? Yeah, yeah that was all me, so I did all the, I mean, I built everything on this bike. Just going to the, look at the shifter side. Okay, so the shifter is the the factory shifter, but the it is the fact. So we ran a couple different ways. We tried to figure that out because because we went with forward kind of high mid, well high forward controls, right? To try and keep it nice and tight there. And uh, the shifter, we tried to bunch it. I tried to make linkage for it. It was like it just looked. Yeah, it was too much going on different over options, there. Okay. The now, did you just was call just, those forward controls? Well, I mean. No, they're, they're kinda, like they're kind of halfway, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, if the bike yeah. was a, it's a small bike. Yeah. If it was on a anything bigger, they would be mid controls, I think. But they kind of end up looking forward because, cool. Because of the size of this thing, yeah. it's yeah. You carburetors, stock. Yeah, built. those are just Makunis that were on it. Um, and then filters, is that what I see there? Uh, those are something cheap off the internet. That was uh, a. Okay, and look alike. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, they're knockoffs for sure. I didn't pay big bucks yeah. for those. It had velocity stacks on it. When I first had this running, I had velocity stacks on it, and it was, it, I could not get this thing jetted for the life of me. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you can see all the. I never ended up cleaning all the bluing off the exhaust, but it ran so lean and so hot. Uh, and now I'm running these filters, and it's night and day. It just chokes it off. Just chokes it off enough yeah. that it, it runs a bit cooler. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Good. So, and then battery, you talked about the wiring. I see a condenser up here. Uh, you said it was pretty straightforward. Yeah, better, the wiring's pretty straightforward. It, it's the first kind of full wiring harness I've done for a bike, but it, it came together well, it worked. Yeah. Uh, we, got, we got this thing done four days ago. It came off the lift on Monday or Tuesday? Yeah, Mon Monday. Monday, I rode, yeah. I rode it Tuesday. I think I had like four breakdowns and and all because of my wiring. Um, I kind of had it all, we ended up running this kind of faux oil bag yep. with all the electrical in it. Yeah. And I made some mistakes there with the, the I've got kind of like a bung to stop the wires from rubbing on the outside of the, right. the box there and that didn't work out. That kind of popped out, cut through the wires. We had a little electrical fire in there on Wednesday. <laughs> Yeah, we had to go and rest. So it's a little bit smoke. It's Tuesday, and I res rescued it Wednesday, and then yeah. we drove out here Thursday. Such is chopper building. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. But I mean, um, it, it starts and runs great now, so it's good. Good. Yeah. yeah, I did a couple things on on the Sportster that I wanted to try out. I went with one of those Moto Gadget units. Yeah. And they're slick. Yeah. Oh, man, does that make wiring easy? Uh, really good. And uh, I went with a digital guard dog remote starter system. Oh yeah. So I just have a fob in my pocket. Cool. You just walk up and flip run stop to run and hit the starter and away you go. Yeah. And uh, so that worked out pretty well. And I went with a lithium iron phosphate battery. And I've been looking for somebody who can do a, a podcast with me about batteries because they, what I've read, the research I've done says that lithium ion does not have as many life cycles as lithium iron phosphate. Huh. And Honda's moving into lithium and they call theirs lithium ferrous. Well, you know, typical Honda, they don't want to call it what everybody else is calling it. But if you think about it, ferrous, ferrous. iron phosphate, it's yeah. probably the same it's the technology. Same but apparently there's a lot more cycles in an iron phosphate battery as opposed to an ion. And I'm trying yeah. to find somebody who can teach us about that, because I'll tell be you, cool that battery 
dive into the one. one I have in there is easily less than half the size of that. Yeah. And I mean, they're light, and you can tuck them away, you can mount them upside I down. Know. It doesn't matter which way you go with them. Um, it's just really, really cool the way, you know, when you just throw them in there. Yeah. And lots of power. I mean, that's a 1275. And that wee little battery, I thought, oh, this is no way. This is one of those guys at Precision Framework said, no, 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 we've done them before. And I thought, mm, no, you haven't. And I put it in there. Oh man, hit the starter. Boom. Uh, nice. Yeah, way it goes. Even hot. Yeah, yeah, it's good hot too. So anyway, little bit about batteries there. Uh, so moving back, you talked. You got electrical hidden in the oil bag there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah everything but the battery, there. which. The seat, is that the seat that came with it? <laughs> this is the seat that was on it, and it kind of, I don't know how it held up that well. I also don't know where that seat came from, but it's, it's yeah. It's in amazingly good shape. Like, it looks good shape. Like it's got, wrong with it. That thing's got to be old, too. So, I looked at other seats. I don't know, it just, it came with it. It was yeah. kind of cool, so we kept running it. Yeah. yeah, cool. And I should just explain to the viewers that if you're wondering about people walking in front of the cameras, we're at a live show and we tried to get here early and we're going we a little bit over time so now people are coming in the show opens at 11 so there may be more people walking in front of the camera uh, but we'll get this done fairly quick. <laughs> so the fender nothing yeah the fender's nothing special it's just a trailer fender that kind of got Did cut down a bit mounting or anything Was the uh, done or? i had to redo a bunch of the mounting for the sissy bar when i built that Right. Um, and then it's I had to do like a last change minute. a couple holes, but yeah, 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 it was, yeah, yeah, it was pretty straightforward mounting that thing. Cool. Um, I had to do some last minute cutting out on the other side to make the chain fit. There was there's not a lot of clearance in the back end here. Everything is super super tight. Yes. So yeah, we and that's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah we spent a lot of time yeah. getting it. Yeah, it's yeah. a little too tight in a couple spots, but it, the yeah. acorn exhaust. What's the deal with it? That's what was on there? The, yeah, yeah, this was on there too. I spent a lot of time cleaning these up, but they, I mean, they're pretty stock standard, just little shaker exhaust. I love the, yeah, I love the shape. Yeah. They're, they're a cool style, for sure. Yeah, they're, 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 for sure. And then rear wheel, drum brake. The, so the rear wheel is the stock wheel off it in a, on a 77. So that was all, that's probably the only other original part on this thing. Tires? Uh, Avon's. Front and back, the I, I mean I've run them. They're kind of a classic car. Oh, they're yeah. They're on everything. Yeah. I don't think on a bunch of the bikes. Yeah, yeah. So, you couldn't ask for anything. No, me. right? That was yeah. You, that's you just yeah. Don't even. And then the paint. Tell us about the paint and the design and where yeah. this all came from. So this was this is my first bike that I painted like frame up the whole deal. Um, Zach had picked the color, he painted the tank this blue last year um, and decided that was the direction we wanted to go, wanted to do the color match frame. We bounced around ideas for what was gonna, what we were gonna actually paint on the bike um, and just kind of settled on classic flames, yeah. like you can't go wrong. It was our first real full build. I yeah. just wanted to do something that would stand oh, yeah. the test of time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the chains, I can't even really tell you where the chain <laughs> flames came from. Uh, was there beer involved? It was, oh, it was, yeah. 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 Uh, it was a joke for a little while. And then, yeah, some late like, nights at the shop, and the idea just yeah. kind of like percolated and. This little sign down here was actually my test panel just to like prove the theory to myself. I'm like, I can, I can do this. I can, oh, okay. I can pull these yeah. chains into some flames and I think it's going to work out. Yeah, the sign looks pretty um, yeah, Very nice. Good for you. Good job, you guys. Yeah, thank you. Don't awesome. real clean. Looks fantastic. Well, do you guys have anything else you want to say right now? Um... Josh, Anybody that wanna, is viewing, you want to you plug your business? You should plug your business. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I do all my paint work from as Kickstart Customs uh, with a C. Customs with a C. Yes. Uh, we're based in Roslyn, BC, and 
and yeah, custom paint, signs, uh, illustration, graphic design. Uh, Instagram, right. website. Instagram is kickstart underscore customs, customs right. with a C, uh, kickstartcustoms.ca. And yeah, you can find me on all Facebook. the social media. All your own yeah, Instagram. I'm on there, yeah. uh, but active on Instagram and, and try cool. and keep my website. Excellent. Zach, up to date. Do you need to plug anything, or you're just an independent guy? Yeah, I mean, I work out of the same shop. I do bits and pieces on bikes, but mostly for myself. So, right. I don't think cool. it's a whole lot to plug. And of course, <laughs> for me, speed and color. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on all the podcast platforms. Um, as well, we're on Instagram. I don't do Facebook because I don't like Facebook, and I'm an old guy, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, and no website yet, but I got somebody trying to talk me into that, so we'll see how it goes. But for sure, follow us on Instagram. Check us out. If you're listening to the podcast, check us out on YouTube. And if you're watching us, if you're driving down to Lethbridge or something, turn us on on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever. All right. Hey, thanks for being here. We'll see you again soon. There you go, guys. Sweet. And now you're thinking, frick, this old guy, he's got the gig. This is easy. (laughs) 